So if you look around YouTube, most specifically kind of tech YouTubers, you will see that uh, there's one shot used pretty often. And this effect is a pan effect and it's done with a slider. It looks very nice and that is why so many YouTubers use it. So I went on Amazon and I looked at how much a slider costs and it actually costed like 90 to 100 bucks. And some of these more high-end production companies are using motorized camera sliders, so I wondered how much those cost. The price of a motorized camera slider was in the upwards of $500, but $250 for just kind of a short one like this. So in this two-part series, I'm going to be building a motorized camera slider using an Arduino to get the same effect with much lower cost. So yeah, here's the electric part. Now the great thing about doing it this way with the CNC shield and uh, the jumper barrel type uh, connector for power is that it's also can be a final solution. If you do this with a breadboard, yeah, you can attach the driver and then have a whole bunch of cables going everywhere, but once you get it working, that's not really a viable plan for using it anywhere else but inside your studio. And you could buy something like this connector and then cut off the end and separate the positive and negative wires, but this is so much easier because all you have to do is connect it when you want power and when you're done, boom. Some people might want to save the extra 10 or 12 bucks I spent on the CNC shield to do it with a breadboard, but I think this is a much more long-term solution. So if you were building this, I'd recommend you do it this way. However, they don't have this little jumper right here to connect the enable and ground pins, but you can find those uh, on eBay or at your local uh, hardware shop for just a couple of dollars. So as I said, the system itself is very compact and it's very easy at the end of the day to just unplug the power, unplug the stepper motor, pack this into a bag and then also pack this somewhere else and then you're done with cleanup. So that's kind of it for the hardware portion. It's pretty simple because we use the CNC shield, but now we're going to get onto the software portion. Now the reason we use a stepper motor is because rather than a traditional motor, at slower speeds it has more steps, so it's much smoother. So when you're getting those slow, smooth pans of a product, it's not going to seem really jumpy. So stepper motors are a bit more complex unlike traditional DC motors which you just give power to for a certain amount of time. Stepper motors need a stepper motor driver and then you need to control it in some kind of language. So the most accessible tool to us is our Arduino and using GRBL which was built to use on an Arduino. Basically all you need to know is that it uses G-code to send commands to the stepper motor and then that's how we control it. So first we need to program the Arduino with a GRBL sketch so it knows what to do. I'll have this website down in the description but basically what you need to do is go to download the library from GitHub and then download that .zip file. Now unlike any other zip file, do not extract this one because the Arduino IDE can take zip files and import libraries that way. So to install the library in your Arduino IDE, you go to sketch, include library, and then add a .zip library. Now I already have the GRBL library, but you're going to go to wherever you downloaded the GRBL library and then point the Arduino IDE to it, and then it will import the library. Now whoever made this GRBL library, I give them massive props because they made it super simple to install onto the Arduino. Go to file and then examples and go all the way down to uh, the GRBL, whatever you changed the .zip name to. It will be at the bottom here under the examples from the custom libraries. Click GRBL to Arduino. And all you have to do then is plug in your Arduino you can verify the sketch if you want and then upload the sketch to your Arduino. So to send these commands, we're going to be using a program called Universal G Code Sender. I will also have this link down in the description, but it's written in Java, so it works on Mac and PC as long as you have the Java installed. And to download it, all you have to do is scroll down here and click 1.0.9 and it will start to download. 
Now, our Arduino is listening for G-code on a certain frequency, kind of, and this is called the baud rate. So ours is going to be at 9600, and if it connects successfully, you'll see a little uh, piece of text down here saying that it will connect correctly, and I'll show you right now. And as you can see, we connected successfully. It says connected to slash dev slash cu.usb modem uh, at 9600 baud rate. So we're going to go over to machine control and hit the X+. Plus. Something's wrong. Oh, oh, I bet it would help if I plugged in the motor. It would also help if you connected the positive and negatives right. Hey! Finally, to change the speed, uh, since we're in the X axis, we're gonna change the X step per millimeter, and we'll change it to something like 10, and then just crank up the step size all the way. So yeah, that's basically it for the electronics portion. So thank you guys so much for watching. It really does mean a lot. Thank you for watching. Part one, part two will be building the mechanical camera slider itself. And part three might be a finale showing you the slider and how it turned out. So if you like this DIY type of video, give it a thumbs up and tell us what you would like to see in the comments down below. And we will see you guys in our next video.